Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today is November 30th. Uh, this is episode three of Boxing Rampage. I am your host, JC, accompanied by Flacco. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everything? So, weather today over here is raining outside, a lot of traffic outside. So, we're, we're going to be- begin this podcast. You know, this is going to be a short podcast. We'll press for time. But uh, first off, we want to talk about the uh, Walters Lomachenko fight, our thoughts on what we think about it. Flacco, w- what's on your mind about that? Wow, man. What else can I say? I mean, this guy just quit it, gave up on his fans. Can we give him a second chance? I, I think we can. I think we can. Well, I mean, when it comes to boxing, and and I remember the criticism that uh, Roberto Duran got when he quit it on the second fight with Sugar Ray Lund, and this hit the the first page on the on the papers and the news, and it was everywhere. Like this guy was criticized, and he had to build himself back up. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's gonna be. I mean, nowadays things are different now. Due to the fact that people care about when it comes to uh, the boxer's health and and whatnot, but I think it's a little bit different. So if he say that he's hurt, that he was hurt in the previous round, and and that's why he quit it, you know, then a lot of people would try to understand. But I mean, when it comes to boxing, and you, and you are a boxer, I believe that there's certain things that you're supposed to do. When you are hurt, which is change the style, get go against the rope, try try to um, just mm-hmm. survive. Cause just giving up just like that, it, it doesn't look good. So my opinion, my personal opinion, I think he should have just changed his game plan, try to move around more, uh, stick to the ropes, and and, and like um, just uh, focus on defense and and use his range and his jab. The guy was just trying to go for for the the, the punch and and knock this guy out and. He's a slick fighter. Lomachenko is a slick fighter. He's high tech. It's, it's really hard to just catch him with one straight punch mm-hmm. and and knock him out. But um, I'll, I'll let you before I I go into more details. I'll let you. Uh, well, no, I I I think he uh, he he definitely quit. But I think it's under different circumstances. See, sometimes when a fighter quits, it's either because you know. I, I mean, in the past, I mean, you, you look at situations like you know, like uh, you know, I hate to bring Victor Ortiz into this, but. You know, a lot of times they could quit either maybe just, you know, they don't have the stamina for it or whatever the case is or, or maybe the punishment they're taking. But th- this circumstance is a lot different. I knew Walters was frustrated because when between rounds when he was in the corner, he would look to his trainer, then he would look to his father. And both of them were giving him advice. In the beginning, just his trainer was giving him advice. But I just noticed after a while, I, I forget what round it was when Lomachenko, he basically stopped boxing, just squared up and... and and put his hands up, like, well, what else do you have to show me? I believe that was round six. Yeah, oh, okay, round six. So, basically, when you look at stuff like that, then I just think Walters felt that, hey, he had nothing to offer. He, he had, I mean, he put his best effort forward, and I think Lomachenko said uh, the first four rounds are going to be the most difficult, and that's pretty much what it, I guess that's what it took him to break him down, but... I think Walters just quit out of a sense of he had nothing more to offer, and the way he was he was tripping his legs up when when uh, Lomachenko was giving his angles. I mean, it it was going to be a TKO anyway. I just think in this case he saved face, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that as far as him quitting in that fashion. I I mean, I don't think that he was really hurt. I I think it was more of just a thing of he just didn't have an answer for him. He was he was he was being toyed with. He was being made to look foolish. So. At that point, I think it was just better just to stop the fight, take the loss, and you know, not not f- further ridicule himself to where you know, he he would look worse in the past. But I take nothing away from Walters. Um, the only thing I think could have been different is that he should have took a tune-up fight in between, maybe something to keep his reflexes sharper or just be more aggressive. Because I mean, um, Harold Letterman was even saying, you know, he, he just wanted him to be more aggressive. He wasn't. Uh, Putting punches together, he was landing one, two punches at best, but it just wasn't enough to uh, to disrupt uh, Lomachenko. And you know, one thing I'm impressed about Lomachenko is that man. It's just the the first I saw it in round one. The first thing he was doing, he established the range, you know, w- which was tougher to do. Second thing, he got down Walter's timing. Next thing he did, you know, he he figured out his speed, um, and the whole time, obviously, he wouldn't let him throw that right hand. Um, his foot placement, he, he was constantly outside of Lomachenko's uh, uh, feet. So that's what was hard for, for, 
for uh, for Walters to move around. Lomachenko was always out, outside of what his foot placement was, so he wasn't letting it move. But um, but yes, it, it's one of those things, man. To where you know, to where I felt that Lomachenko was just so impressive. Uh, I had said that before. Is just you know, it's, it's one of those things. He, he's he's on another level, and you know, this just this just further solidified how, how good he is. Well, basically, um, if you guys follow us on Instagram on Boxing Rampage. I did did a prediction, and I think it was really spot on. I I did believe that, and this is my prediction before the fight, that uh, Walters was gonna come in, um, gun blazing or, or basically trying to find a punch and and knock this guy out with one punch in the first four rounds. And after that, I I thought to myself that um, Lomachenko was gonna get into the rhythm and start frustrating him, moving around, pot shotting him, um, using angles, and not getting not getting hit and not being uh Walters not being able to see him. So basically that's what happened. But Walters gave up before my prediction, which was the ten or eleven round. Uh and I actually said that the corner was gonna stop the fight. But um yeah, when it comes to fighting and and and, and you're a boxer, in my opinion, you, you support you have fans and you got people that support you, that buy tickets for you, that um put money on you and a lot of this money is, is hard work, work money that people earn on a daily basis. And, and you just, this is what you give them is, is, is bad on your side. So I, I believe that Walter should have just stick, stick in. And yeah, yeah, nobody wanted to get knocked out. And that's probably why he pulled out. But he should have ju- just changed his game plan and, and just go on survival mode for the rest of the remaining rounds. Yeah. Um, you know, and like I said, as far as uh, Walter's, there's nothing. Uh, negative to say about him. I mean, like I said, he 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 took this fight. Um, he obviously got well compensated for it, so he'll be all right, man. But uh, at the end of the fight, um, when they interviewed Lomachenko, he said he wants to fight uh, Francisco Vargas, which um, he he on paper he looks like a very good fighter. And um, the last person Francisco Vargas fought was Orlando Salido, the same guy that beat Lomachenko. Controversial though, but. Uh, it was a draw, uh, majority decision draw. But um, how, how do you think that fight will play out if uh, Lomachenko fights? Uh, uh, I think at, at, at this point, I, I like Vargas. You know, he's a guy that I got a lot of heart that comes in strong. And, you know, he's undefeated. He don't know how to lose. And basically, this guy is going to come in and give you a great performance. But And he will not... Honestly, I know that he would not quit. <laughs> but um, I don't see this fight going any other way than uh, Lomachenko just um, either getting the knockout or a decision. I'll say a decision because uh, Barga's got a lot of heart. But I, I'm, I just say that Lomachenko's at another level. This guy, his speed, his hand speed, his combinations, his movement, it, it'll, it'll be too much. Yeah, his angles. It'll be too much for for any, any brawler. You know, you need guys that... Guys like Rigo or or probably like Terran Crawford, those those are guys that give him that have technical skills. Are the guys going to give him problem? These guys that just know how to brawl, and I I do believe in a rematch with um with Salido is, is going to be a a one sided performance. And um I, I, he should, in my opinion, he should get try to get that re- rematch to avenge that L. But if he doesn't, it does. It, it doesn't do anything to him because he he already proved that he's at another level. The kid, the kid, um, still got a lot to prove because he has to like put those names on his resumes. Mm-hmm. But um, by the eye test itself, he, he shows that he's he's at another level. He's like Pacquiao ten years ago. He he would have come in and destroyed anybody, and he he put a, a great performance. No, yeah, definitely. So you know. Um we hope to see more from Lomachenko. I mean, HBO is doing a great job of promoting him. So um, let's see if that fight gets made. You know, either way, he's, he's, he's someone who I enjoy watching everything about him, like I said. Um, so moving on, um, December 10th is going to be a big date. I mean, there are so many fights going on that day. So many. I mean, between Showtime um, and uh, Matchroom, um, th- there's even local fights going on, which, you know... Um, it's, it's just going to be a busy weekend in boxing. But uh, one of the most notable fights to notice on that date is obviously going to be uh, Terrence Crawford and uh, John Molina. Um, let's touch base on that. I know we had touch base in the past. Um, I mean, I don't think there's much to say about this fight. I think it's it's going to be one-sided. 
The only thing I think is going to be different in this fight is to see how um, Crawford handles a uh, uh, po- guy who's a power puncher and if he would feel obligated. Because this is the thing. When you have a fighter that easy to fight, like, for example, like if you look at the fight between John Molina and Adrian Broner, that fight, Broner won it, but it was so one-sided and, like, so boring because, I mean, all he had to do was jab him, move, you know, jab, move, and obviously he was winning the fight, but there, there was nothing. The thing is, to, to be a great fighter, I, I know you have the skills, like a guy Crawford, he has the skills to do anything, but sometimes when you're that great, your defense is so good to where it, it can be the type of fight that could put fans to sleep. So I, I don't question he'll win the fight, Crawford. I, I know he'll win the fight. The question is, I want to see how he approaches it. If he tries to engage and try to make it somewhat of an exciting fight to where he can get the fans into it. What, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, it's going to be just a one-sided fight. I, I don't see that fight going any other way. Like I said before in the previous podcast, I got a lot of respect for Molina because he got, he's a kid that comes to fight. He got a lot of heart. But that fight is not going to go in any other way than a knockout. And if you want to go into it, I'll, I'll say a, fi- a fifth round KO for uh Wow, Crawford. that's brave, man. And, I mean, think about it. This kid, uh, Crawford got a lot of criticism for not – KO and Postal, and and he he yeah, I believe Postal's that he's tough though. Yeah, but he got a yeah. he, he yeah, for me personally I believe that he could have he just had to press press the his gears and and he would have been able to, to get the KO or a TKO and he said why not at the end and he saw the criticism and you know I, I Bob I you know I, in back of the stage I probably pull his ear and be like listen what the heck are you doing you know you got to come in there and and put in a show if you want to be a pay per view star if you want to be a superstar you got to get KOs if you if because if you see the opening and if you see a KO coming and you don't go for it people are going to criticize you well I think it's more of a thing to where when you're such a great boxer like that you don't want to take unnecessary risks. Yeah, but um, they, no, and I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that he's coming from a place of why I put myself at risk. But then again, that um, I'm not taking anything away. But like I said, everything is a balance to where you have to be willing to, to put some risk out there to at least make a fight. I mean, th- there's not really much of a fight to be made. He's not going to brawl with him. But just for the, for the, for the sense of entertainment purposes, yeah. it'll be nice. So Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I, I believe like... Me personally, when a boxer sees like a, a, a KO coming, they should just go for it, and because people are are there be there to be entertained, and you know that's why guys like Mayweather they used to get criticism in his late career, but when he he was a sensation in his early career when he was money May, uh, when he was a uh, pretty boy, when Mayweather was pretty boy, he used to get KOs and, and he was full of action. He would demolish guys and break them down, and that was exciting. But then when it gets to the point where you just don't want to get the KO, and, that's, and that was a lot of the reasons that Mayweather got criticized, even on the Andre Berto fight, which I felt he could have uh, KO Alberto or, you know, take Berto's him out. fast, man. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I, you saw that fight, man? That he, he was, yeah, it, was, it was one-sided. It was one-sided. Berto, Berto was and, and he's, he's pretty fast. Too. Yeah, but I saw, I saw Berto hurt. Berto wasn't doing, other than getting punched to the face the whole night, he wasn't doing, pretty much he wasn't doing much. But also I want to get it, um, talking about the news and boxing, Kyle Frotch is talking about coming back for a Triple G fight. And honestly, mm. me personally, I don't think he's going to uh, mess up. <laughs> he, yeah, he's not going to mess up that nose job to come and get a payday. He might, unless, you know, if they guarantee him, if he, if he get his nose broken, uh, uh, you know, surgery. On the contract, where you? Nah, <laughs> I mean that's, that, that's more of a novelty fight. I don't even think it's a challenge to a guy like Triple G. I mean, frankly, a guy like Triple G, I, I respect what he's doing. I don't think he's just trying to fight. I mean, obviously, money is part of the equation. But when, you, when you're that determined like him, he, I truly believe he is out to unify all the titles at 160. I, I, I just think, I think the fight that that he wants to get is 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 a Danny Jacobs fight. Um, Hopefully to be one step closer to unify all the titles. But, um, but before we go into another topic, um, I wanted to touch base also on, on the uh, undercard of the Crawford versus Molina, uh, the Raimundo Beltran versus Mason Maynard. Uh, originally, the fight was supposed to be between uh, Beltran and um, Juan Baby Bull Diaz, but I guess he got injured, um, broke his hand, or, or from what I believe, but. 
I think that fight can still happen. Uh, um, Juan Diaz is an exciting fighter. He's exciting to watch. Um, but uh, as far as this Beltran fight versus Mason Maynard, uh, from what I'm seeing, Maynard is, uh, is a power puncher. Um, obviously, the younger man. Uh, Beltran is, is the, you know, uh, old, old dog here pretty much. Um, uh, the way I see that fight playing out, just for interests of politics, so to say, uh, Beltran is the bigger name. Uh, Juan Diaz is a, is a fighter that has recognition, but um, I don't think is is a household name yet. So, uh, f as far as this fight, I see uh, Beltran winning by decision. I don't see Maynard putting himself at much risk to to put himself out there because although he does have a lot of knockouts, Maynard. Um, his one loss is a knockout, so I don't think it's something that he's going to put himself out there. It's unnecessary risk. So um, me personally, I I'm gonna go against <coughs> you, and I, I'm gonna pick Manar on this fight. I think uh, um, Beltran brings, you know, he he's a he's a veteran. He, he he's a smarter guy, but um, I think his career is about to be done. And, and this kid is is still trying to prove that he's still out there. And I, Beltran have power, but his power is not that great. You know, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have like a a crazy power, the one punch power or or an eraser, as you may call. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he only got like 19, I believe, KOs in his career. But it, yeah. this kid is he's hungry. He, um, Menard is hungry. He's young. You know, he's trying to prove himself. And I, I think getting through Beltran is gonna be better on his career. So I, I, mean, I it, it, it could go either way, you're right. But I just I don't know, just I'm just basing it off of experience is really important. Yeah, because yeah. I'm saying when when you're you, when you're an older fighter like that, you, you're more likely to try to set traps for the younger fighter to want to engage you and then you'll just counter off of what they do. But um but it could go either way, you're right. Um but I really wanted to see Beltran and, and Diaz make the fight because like I said it's it's Usually when you're a younger fighter like Diaz uh, and, and you have a lot of star power, the best way to get recognized is by fighting a veteran because, I mean, you, you're pretty much showcasing your talents uh, against someone who's already established. So um, maybe, maybe it'll happen in, in the future. Who knows? So um, I have Beltran but by unanimous decision winning that. Um, so um, also, um, I wanted to touch on, um, I know we spoke about this. I mean, this is a, this is a, pretty easy fight to predict here, but the Anthony Joshua versus Eric Molina fight, um, no, no contest over here. Anthony Joshua is going to knock him out. I, there's, there's nothing. What, what do you say about that? Yeah. Um, this, uh, Anthony Joshua is always in the mix with Wilder. And for me personally, I think he got to put in a better performance than Wilder. I think Wilder went in deep deep waters with Molina and um, at, at time didn't look that well. So I think that Anthony Joshua got to put in a better performance so people could come in and start talking and, and building up a future fight with Wilder if Wilder um, comes comes healthy after that hand injury. No, oh, yeah. I mean, um, as far as Eric Molina, I recall the time that he fought Deontay Wilder. Um he looked good. I mean, when he would he would stand there with, with, with Wilder, and, and who knows, maybe Wilder's hand was already injured back then, but when he was standing there trading with him, he looked it looked pretty nice. The question with him was that when you got later into the rounds, then his stamina wouldn't hold up, and obviously Wilder was able to knock him out. But um, I expect Molina just to put up a, a good show, you know, a good showing. And, and Anthony Joshua, I think he's smart. I don't think he's going to try to demolish him as soon as he gets him. I think he's going to, you know, uh, try to box him a little and, and, you know, put him away. I just don't know what round. If I had to guess, I probably would say six, maybe yeah. fifth round. Yeah, this fight, for me, it looks really similar to the Brazil fight. It's going to be a one-sided fight. Uh, Joshua's going to just put in a show and look good, look good in front of his um, his fans. I mean... I don't see this this fight going in either way. Molina's going to show hard, <clears throat> just like Brazil did, and he's going to try to stick it. He probably Molina will probably do a little better than 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 Brazil, but I don't see this this fight going any other way than um, Joshua by KO. Um, also talking about news, uh, what about you think? What, what do you think about that Rios versus Victor Ortiz fight? Oh man, uh, I I don't know which one of those guys is. I, with all the respect to both of them, I don't know which one of those guys is is more 
one is like just out of his mind and the other one lives in another planet. Like one's an actor who lives in this fantasy world and then one is a guy who's not being realistic. I mean, I mean, what, what, what do you got? A guy with a, with an iron chin, like Brandon Rios, who, who, you know, who has, who has power in both hands, but just has, you know, uh, uh, quicksand for feet versus Victor Ortiz, a guy who's got a glass chin, who has very good hand speed and, and somewhat decent footwork. Um, but the thing with, with Brandon Rios, he's for as much flack as people give him, this, this guy is a guy who's tough. Hands down. He's, he's a tough guy. Um, I mean, look at, for example, the fight with Pacquiao he had. That was a one-sided fight. I mean, anybody else probably would have quit. And, you know, Pacquiao usually puts down he puts down his opponents when he fights them. I mean, he fought he fought Rios, and, you know, Rios just took all the punishment he had. So, I mean, if I had to guess with both of them, I would, I would put uh, Brandon Rios. But the most exciting thing about that fight is going to just be the trash talking. Because they, they, they haven't been... Um, best of friends over the years and, and they've been wanting to fight each other for years because I, I, it sounds like they've had like personal beef with each other. So, Well, me personally, I, I think this fight is going to do on two things. It's going to be if Rios make weight and doesn't have any issue making the weight and doesn't look like a tank in the ring, then he should be he should be able to be a little bit flexible and, and keep his, his uh, punches count up and, and be able to break down uh, Ortiz, or just catch him with one good punch and make him quit. Because it's not that hard. You don't really have to be a great boxer to, to take out Ortiz at this point in his career. Ortiz was a guy that I was really hype on on his early career and, and, and a promising kid. But sometimes when you hurt yourself hard, badly and, like, uh, Josecito Lopez broke his jaw. And even before that, I think Maidana hurt him hard. Mm-hmm. And it, it it comes where you gotta show will will and 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 that that heart in you and that warrior in you and keep and continue going and that's why me personally I was um I was a true fan of Arturo Gatti because this guy could have been freaking he could have been all broken and he would have continued I remember that one round where he's he told his corner my hand is broken his his the trainer asked him what you want me to do <laughs> he said uh I gotta keep going and that that <laughs> hey man that's why people used to love Arturo man oh, people gotta show a heart man and, and and yeah dude I think is is the is the guy that that will come to mind when when you think about heart I'm not saying that you yeah, know but there's a lot of other boxes that show heart and like Andre War showed a lot of heart in the previous fight and that's that's what you're there for. That's what you get paid for, and you you gotta to give the just, fans a yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. Speaking of uh, Brandon Rios, he I I think he's I mean he's always I don't think he's training with anyone else. He's still training with with, with Robert Garcia, right? Nah, he's uh with Ted Goosen now. I think. Oh wow! Oh wow! I so believe. Well, the reason I bring Robert Garcia up is because I know him and Brandon Rios have always trained, but I I don't know. You know, I could be wrong, but. Is uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is he is he still training with Brandon Rios? Because I mean he got him in phenomenal shape. So I mean, uh, you, well, you mean with Robert uh, Garcia? Right? Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I, he he was training with with Roach, and he was coming out to the gym, and they had their problem, and he would come and go, and then he would go home and train. And now th- there's a guy who 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 has uh, look. I'm not gonna say all the talents, but if if he was more dedicated to his craft. He he could have been. I mean, he is something special just because of the name and you know the wins he's had. But I think he, if he would have more discipline in his career, then then he would be in, in a in a better place. He'd have more more opportunities presented to him. Um, but the reason I bring him up is uh, he's set to fight on December tenth as well. Um, he's fighting an opponent uh, by the name of Dominic British, and this will be in uh, Arena Monterrey in, in uh, Nuevo León, Mexico. Um, I'm looking up this opponent. I mean, I've never heard of him. I'll be honest with you. Uh, Dominic British, uh, his record stands at 32 wins, two losses, one by knockout, and 32 of those wins come uh, by uh, KO, 11 KO. So I'm looking this guy up. I mean, he's German. What can we say? Mm-hmm. Like, nah. ba- basically, <laughs> uh, people, it looks, it looks, sounds like a, like a, oh, I want to look good fight. That's what it looks yeah, like. Basically, a, a, an opponent, so Chavez could look good and, and put up his name back, back in the picture. So for later, maybe in, uh, somewhere in 2017, get him a, a decent fight. Yeah. I don't know. At what oh. way, at what way is, is a fight? Do you know? 
Is uh, it a super middleweight? Is what it's showing here. Super so middleweight. One sixty eight. Yeah, one sixty eight. So I mean, yeah, because when he fought, uh, what's this guy's name? He fought before, uh, before he took his long layoff. Um, from from Faro. Yeah, from Faro. Like that was, uh, you know, that's that, that was a that, light heavyweight. And yeah, he got I mean, destroyed. He, he he shouldn't have went up there, and then he, you know, he yeah. got dropped. So. You got destroyed on that fight. I don't. I don't think that was necessary to even go up there. So but that, that's the thing when when it comes to uh, um, Walter's quitting and and uh, Chavez quitting, it's, it's pretty basically it's almost similar. But the fact that you didn't really up though. yeah, but but then then again you don't you you saw Chavez hurt. He mm-hmm. was down on the fight, and he just you know he was getting destroyed. Um, he but, did rally in the next round when he came back. He tried to you know. Um, so he, he tried to do. He tried to put something up later on. Yeah. So you know he he did, but you know he, he at least he you saw that he was hurt. But do you really saw Walters like really really hurt in a way? I I mean I saw him stun a couple of times, but I didn't saw him hurt in a way that be like ouch. You know they should stop the fight. And mm-hmm. wait, wait wait the Chavez are like yeah this fight's not going any other way. This guy's gonna go in for a knockout and you know you had that already that. It, that view on your on your mind that it, mm-hmm. it could have happened. So also, I want to discuss the um, and I know there's a fight that you're a lot more interested in. It's, it's the Jamal Charlo versus Julian Williams set for the uh, same night. Uh, Julian Williams looks very impressive. Uh, basically, this guy has 22 wins, no losses. Uh, Charlo, 24 wins, 18 by KO, no losses. I mean, this is a fight. Honestly, this. If, if I, I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm not gonna say pay per view maybe because I'm a little cheap but <laughs> but I mean it's it's pay per view worthy and it's it's probably a fight that could have waited to be made because like I say both fighters are undefeated they're going in with the mindset of they're not taking a loss they're gonna fight however they can to stay alive and, and make that fight uh, happen I mean if I had to pick between both of them I mean this is my opinion I'm picking Julian Williams I mean the guys from Philadelphia Philly fighters don't don't go down easy <laughs> um, so you know what do you think yeah I agree on that and th- this is a 50 50 fight for me and basically the way I- I'll put it and set it up is Julian looks like the better fighter by the eye the eye test says that William is the better fighter mm-hmm. but Jamal have shown in the ring with, with the opponent, he got better as opponent. He has shown that he he's able to to beat his opponent and and, and come to to the location. So basically, what I'm trying to say here is, you're going with the the guys that has shown some flaws but have done the work versus the guy that have the eye test. And on this one fight, I'm going with the eye test. And I I usually don't 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 go with the eye test, but I think that that Williams have a really a style that will give um, Jamal a, a really hard time. Uh, I, I got I got uh, John on the phone. What's up, John? Talk to me. What's up, guys? It's John from Long Island again. I uh, just wanted to start off by saying that your podcast is getting off to a great start. I really like the first two episodes. Uh, you guys have a really good chemistry going. Thanks, bro. Um, and I'll start off by discussing the uh, the Lomachenko and the uh, the Axeman fight. I think uh, there's levels to this game. I feel like Lomachenko shows that he's just levels above everyone in that division. He really, he forced uh, the the man to quit. You know, he was just so frustrated. He said, "Fuck it, I can't beat this guy." So uh, I'm just gonna dip out of there and uh, end this night early. So that was kind of a cop out on his part. And uh, as far as the uh, December 10th cards with Crawford and Molina, uh, I think Crawford and Molina will, will be a slugfest until Crawford lands that that money punch and knocks him out. And uh, the Charlo and the Williams fight, that should be a very, very competitive fight. Uh, I could definitely see Williams winning, but I, f- I actually feel that he'll get robbed on the cards. Um, that should be the fight of the night, though. The, those two fighters are a top-notch at 154. I think they're both better than Canelo. Maybe not as proven, but uh, I, athletically and, and as, as far as skill set, I feel like their skills are, are, are better than Canelo's, to be honest with you. Definitely, brother. Um, and you you made, you brought in a, a a great a great point there that I didn't thought about. And you're right. I think that Williams might get robbed if it goes to a decision. Uh, Charles is a more fan favorite. You know, I understand they both were Heyman, but uh, you're right. I mean, 
is similar to what happened with Koval Ward. It, even if it's a close fight, I, I think that uh, Charlo would be the favorite one. But you got anything else before I, I move on with Brian? I got Brian in the other line, bro. As far as the Midas fight, I feel like uh, Midas is a little bit shop-worn and uh, Cuellar is just a little bit too big for him. I think uh, Cuellar is going to end it in uh, an impressive uh, TKO fashion. Definitely, brother. Definitely. Thanks again for calling, man. I know you're always busy. You're a busy guy, but you take the time to be part of the show, and uh, I really appreciate it, man. Thanks again, and I hope hopefully you could call next week again. And uh, let's move on with, with Brian. What's up, Brian? Talk to me. What's up, Parks and Rampage? What's going on? This is Brian once again from Queens, New York. Just wanted to, uh, you know, say that you guys are amazing. You guys got me hooked. Like it says, and your number one fan calling in every week. You know, love hearing the podcast. You guys are great, man. Great, great, great chemistry. You know, love the topics, love everything, man. Just keep up the great job and great work. All right, guys. Um, just wanted to give my my two uh, senses uh, as far as uh, the fights coming up. I'm going to start ahead with... Uh, actually, let's talk about the fight that just happened with uh, the Axeman and uh, Vas- Vasily Lomachenko. We all knew Lomachenko was going to win that fight. Uh, he just pretty much outclassed the Axeman. Uh, Axeman had no shot. I guess that's why he didn't take the fight in the beginning because he wasn't getting enough money and he figured if he's going to take an, an L... You know, they get paid for it. Um, I didn't like the fact that he quit. That kind of honestly really turned me off from him. Like, I'm uh, maybe I might watch him in the future, but that's something that you don't do. You guys, guys, like Gotti and stuff like that, it's just like, you know, they give it all the heart, you know, and this guy just just got paid. People, you know, went there to go see the fight, and then he doesn't know Mops. I mean, who, who does that, you know? That's just, that's, that's just not, um, that's not boxing, you know? So, uh, very, very disappointed. So, uh, Axeman, he definitely lost the fan in me. So, uh, but anyways, with that being said, um, Lomachenko looks, uh, he looked amazing. Uh, actually, I'm pretty intrigued with seeing him doing a catch weight with Pacquiao. Um, I actually would like that. Um, I think, honestly, he will win because Pac-Man is not the same. Uh, he lost a lot of steam. Um, you know, he doesn't have that, that, uh, killer instinct, like I like to say. So, uh. That'd be great, but I think uh, they should do that fight so that way Pacquiao loses, which we all know, well, you know, he's gonna lose, and he kind of passes the throne to uh, Lomachenko. But anyways, um, that's wishful thinking. But let's talk about Anthony Joshua versus Eric Molina. Um, Eric Molina, school teacher, he's gonna get schooled by Joshua. He's gonna get knocked out. Uh, he's probably gonna get knocked out sooner than he did against Wilder. So uh, that's definitely a landslide for Anthony Joshua. Uh, TKO. Uh, Terrence Crawford versus John Molina, another guy. John Molina, every time he steps it up, he always loses. He lost against Broner, Soto, Matisse, DeMarco, and Crawford is better than all of those guys. So, uh, yeah, John Molina, great guy, a lot of heart, a lot of spirit. Uh, he's he's going down. Crawford is going to knock him out. Um, I just really don't know what round, but uh, that definitely is a W for Crawford. As far as uh, Charlo and J-Rock, um, intrigued about this fight. Honestly, I really do not like Charlo. Call me biased. I just, I just don't like the guy. So I'm hoping J. Rock can knock out Charlo, which I don't know if he could. But if he doesn't, uh, I personally do believe also uh, that he will get robbed in the scorecards. I think Charlo with uh, Heyman and all that, he's gonna end up um, getting uh, the decision that he shouldn't, he shouldn't get. So uh, really hope Charlo gets an uh, his takes his first defeat. So that would uh, really be like an early uh, Christmas present. Anyways, here we go now to uh, the Cuellar and Abner Mars. Uh, Cuellar, you know, he destroyed Rick and he destroyed Juan Mott. Those guys were past their prime, but that dude packs a punch. He got a big, big, strong punches, you know what I mean? Power puncher. And Abner, he's only 29-2. and two. Uh, He lost against Leo Santa Cruz and Johnny Gonzalez. But my honestly, I think after the Johnny Gonzalez fight, he just, he was never the same. He got destroyed in, what, one round? You know, he got knocked out. Um, I love Abner Mars, man, but I think Cuellar is going to pretty much do the same thing like he did to Juanma to Abner Mars. So I think Abner Mars is definitely going to get his ass hat in his home. Uh, I like the guy, but I think uh, even though he's young, I think I think he's, that's it. I think that's it. He um, He's going downhill from now. So anyways, that's pretty much my take on the on the the fight guys uh then once again you know you guys are amazing keep up the great job man all right peace out from new york 
definitely, bro. And thank you again, man, for calling, for being part of the show. I really appreciate it. I know you busy with the kids and everything, but I really appreciate you taking your time. And I wanted to just touch in on the modest uh, part. I definitely agree with you, man. I think that Mata was better at batting weight and that after the Johnny Gonzalez fight, he, he haven't been the same. And I think Quay is going to hurt him. And I have my love for the kid being a fan, and I don't want to see him hurt. And I believe that in this fight, we're going to see Midas get hurt. But um, hopefully we were wrong. Hopefully, you know, he pulled through. But, yeah, man, thanks again for calling. And, Carlos, what do you think? Just uh, call it a day because we already passed 30 minutes, man. All right. Thank you for joining us on this podcast episode of Boxing Rampage, episode three. Uh, thank you, fans. Just be sure to follow our Instagram at Boxing Rampage. Um, and if you have any comments or any suggestions you'd like for the show, just shoot us a message and, and let us know. Yeah, we would uh, love to hear from you guys. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.